It's all for the greater good. <laughs> Big brother the is happy. <laughs> <laughs> the greater good. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. I think that's right. a wonderful place to start. Um, all for the greater good. Um, so, all right. So, when, when, would la- say. when last time we met our heroes, uh, you guys uh, defeated a, a dragon yeah. of Fuck shadowy it. epic proportions, mm-hmm. um, uh, befriended a dwarf named Munder of the Hill Munder. Clan. Um, who Killed unfortunately, uh, yeah, unfortunately, he spent the evening burying his friends, uh, of which one was just simply the remains of his boots. Um, <laughs> you then uncovered the I will sanctuary. Call him <laughs> I will call him boots. Sanctuary. Uh, the sanctuary to Saint Cuthbert, where uh, hidden underneath was um, a relic long forgotten that seems to um, attract Korak directly. Um, <laughs> after the fighting has kind of ceased, um, Valoran realizes that there may or may not be a magical carpet that she then zoomed around the castle with. Um, as the evening winds down, the party decides to uh, find comfort in the sanctuary long forgotten and uh, slowly um, calms to a sleep, having uh, Swift Eye nominated herself as first watch. Uh, I'll take first, first watch. watch. <laughs> you guys okay. deciding who's going to watch uh, as the evening draws to a close and you all slowly fall to sleep. Um, I would I like to cast alarm at the door. Alright, you, you do so. I would like it to make it so that if anyone but the six of us walks through the alarm area, it will ring loudly. Hmm. Excellent. Uh, so Valoran sets an alarm right outside the door. Um, the evening passes by without uh, any kind of alarm or, or issue. Um, your alarm never sets off, and uh, y- you slowly all come to uh, awakenness. Ooh, uh, I need to change something in the middle of the night. Uh, oh. Okay, what do you... <laughs> what do you, what do you steal you my shit again. Uh, what? Okay. What? <laughs> uh, so as people are falling asleep... Um, she is going to, yeah, she's going to cast invisibility on herself and sneak out. Uh, is that going to set off your own alarm? Nope. Because I, I set it so that the six of us don't set off the alarm. Mm, okay. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, Swift Eye, uh, I'm going to need you to roll a perception check. Oh, fuck. Can... <laughs> <laughs> I should get away. And you oh. almost did. <laughs> oh, uh, Swift Eye, you you notice uh, that your uh, your friend that you've now you know become acquainted to uh, her new smell uh, of you know the woods and the spring kind of wafts near you, and you definitely notice that she is walking past you. Oh, I'm gonna, f- I- I- I'm gonna follow her <laughs> silently. Uh, yeah, are you doing it stealthily, or are you just gonna awkwardly? Oh, stealthily. Follow her? No, <laughs> I'm gonna, gonna do that down. stealthily. Uh, ro- roll <laughs> a stealth, and Valoran roll a, a perception. Sure. God damn it. Yep. <laughs> yeah. you, you do so. You, oh, you, you got a little shadow. You <laughs> quietly, you quietly uh, drift among the shadows. Uh, you know. Your monk you training, this day, you, know, Claire. you, can, you can taste the shadows. <laughs> your your monk training, very uh, calling upon your inner strength, and you're just skipping amongst the shadows as uh, Valoran drifts off um, uh, away from the party. Well, then I guess I'll just tell you what you see. Mm. Um, uh, so you hear, <laughs> you hear Valoran. <laughs> what do I Valoran. smell? <laughs> Uh, so you, you follow her to the front door, and she goes outside to uh, and finds Mundar, and um, she's like she says, "So um, I can help or whatever," and then she starts she starts helping him dig. Uh, so Mundar will gladly take uh, the aid, and Mundar uh, digs a, a nice 
small little trench uh, over in this area. Uh, there we go. Um, and <clears throat> what you'll notice is he, he digs a hole, but it's not as what you would expect uh, after he digs probably about 6 to 12 inches deep. Uh, he just starts burying the dead with uh, rocks. Uh, and he, he's mumbling to himself about, You've got to bury it with the rocks. It's where we live. Among the rocks. And he just continues to kind of recite it to himself, uh, almost to make him feel slightly better. So he he buries his friends. <clears throat> yep, she'll help him. She'll help him dig in silence for a while. Um... It, and I guess probably towards the end, if he hasn't said anything, she'll just say, I'm sorry, that really sucks. Or whatever. <laughs> or, or whatever. I mean, it's cool. Uh, they were my mates. It was Mundus and Mindo. We come from the Hill Tribe. Brought here against our will, but... They Where's died the death? way they lived. Where, where, where's your home? Uh, even in in the dim of the night, it, it's it's very easy to see that he's slightly uh, afraid, uh, as if he's not entirely sure where he even may be right now, let alone where his place uh, of origin may be. And he says, huh? "I don't know. That beast brought me here from my cave. We were simple miners, lost, but." Now I don't have a home. You're the last? Well, I don't know what happened to the rest of my clan, but I'm not even sure where we might be to find my way home. Uh, Swift Dive's gonna step out of the shadows. Oh, jeez! Oh, jeez! Oh, yes. By the gods! <laughs> Stomp her quarterstaff on the ground and say, We must reunite you! And stare off somewhere that isn't near them. Uh, you're kind of looking. By the way, light. Did anyone tell you not to sneak around? Gosh. Ah. My heart. Ah, just. Ah, I think I need to sit down. Yeah, uh, Valen seems more surprised and embarrassed than anything. She's more bluster than like anger. Okay. Well, I mean, I think I'm gonna call it a night in the quarters until. Uh, to let decide what to do, and then um, he's he's gonna start before walking Before you that way. before you go to sleep, I was just curious if you've um. She looks like she gives an awkward glance, unnoticed by. Uh, and she gives an awkward glance at Swift Eye, which probably goes unnoticed. But she, there's a slight. I'm still pause. staring in the opposite yeah, direction. Yeah. She, 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 she does. She does pause. Way. Like she pauses a moment before she continues and says, "Um, I don't know if you've have you ever heard of a city called Cinderin." Mm, Cinderin. Well, I've only what I've heard talk in legends. I I heard it. It was originally the origin of the elves, or so they say. But that's all I heard. It's just simply a wives' tale. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, right. Stupid. It's, it's stupid. I mean, but I, I heard that's that's why it's called Passport Port Union of Cinderin, right? Isn't isn't that why they write? Ah, uh, I've not. Well, I spent a little time in this port to, you know, sharpening my tools and whatnot. And I've, I've come to realize that they took the namesake from from the origins of the elves themselves. But I'm sure it's all made up. Yeah, yeah, elves, they're fake. <laughs> so it's all fake. Yeah, totally. Uh, he's gonna clasp his hand on your shoulder, and uh, he's gonna look at you and go. Aren't you an elf? I mean, yeah, but I mean, <laughs> born in anywhere but Sisa? I mean, no. Duh. He's he's gonna stare at you very awkwardly. So, um, we should we should find your home. I'm, I agree with Swift Eye. Let's let's talk about what Swift Eye said before. Um, we should find your home. Ah. <sighs> Even if I could find it, I don't know if they'd welcome me back. It's been too long at this point. Fuck that. <laughs> They'll welcome you back. 
Fuck You're that fucking... indeed. You're a hero. You fought a dragon. In fact, you should go cut off that thing's head and take it with you. Uh, Swift Eye, you definitely remember that people talked about the dragon disappearing. That's the, right. The dwarf the that. dwarf looks up and goes, Well, I could do that. But seeing as my brothers are dead, I don't I don't know what I'll do. I I think I need to sleep on it. And he's gonna start walking this way. Okay. And, I'll fall and back in. He's gonna eventually he's gonna eventually go into these quarters that definitely seem to be like a resting area. Uh, as I as I actually start to walk away, uh, Valorin kind of like um, softly says to Swift Eye, "Hey, just just be cool, okay?" Uh, Swift Eye is gonna be cool. Gonna like shrug. <laughs> be cool. Be cool. Be cool. She's gonna shrug and then like cross her arms and like lean sideways. I mean. Yeah. Not every That's conversation cool. has to mean anything. Just, you know... I mean, no one else has to know, right? <laughs> be cool, be cool, be cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, has to know... Like, to bury the dead? I mean... Yeah, Happening. yeah. They don't, need to, they don't need to know that I came uh, out of here. Noted. Just be cool. <laughs> be cool. Be cool. Right. Right. I am. I am quite. What? What's the temperature outside? Uh, it's it's mid mid spring. It's a it's a nice blustery evening. I am quite cool. Yes. Do you need a sweater? <sighs> she, she walks away. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> quite literal. Metaphor. <laughs> <laughs> she, she starts walking that way. Yeah. She's going to, um, yeah, she's going to hold out a dagger and she's going to kind of tap it along the stone wall as she goes to kind of help lead Swift Eye along. Ah, oh, uh, echolocation. Um, ah. You hear this tap, 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 tap. As you slowly, I'm assuming you're making your way back inside. Yeah, yeah, I'll follow the dwarf in. All right, uh, I'll go, I'll go to the, oh, the sanctuary of Saint Cuthbert and sneak my way back in. All right, <clears throat> you do sanctuary. so. Sanctuary. And shit, Rachel, you thought I was gonna steal something. I mean, it's not outside mm. the realm of possibility. The chances mm. are pretty it's good. Kind of, pretty <laughs> high. It's kind of outside right. the realm. Possibility. This doesn't sound like something Valorant would do. Uh -huh. it definitely sounds like something. Sure. I mean, it's cool. It's cool. Be cool. Be cool. Be cool. Be cool. Be cool. Uh, be cool, be cool. Oh, oh, I'm quite cold. <laughs> uh, so you make your way back in. Um, yep. You know, slowly sneaking around the corners, um, only to discover that. Uh, actually. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. I, I was actually thinking. Um, can I, as I'm going down, can I actually cast a recast alarm? Um, I'm going to. Drop the alarm I already cast. Ah, oh, damn it, Andy. This one. Nope, not that one. This one. Yeah. So I'm actually going to cast an alarm over where Mundar is sleeping. Mm hmm So that if anyone... Um... You leave our Mundar alone. Yeah, yeah. If, if anyone <laughs> if anyone basically approaches in ish that area. Um... So Mundar excluded? Yeah, I'm going to exclude Mundar and myself. Oh. So yeah, I'm gonna if he's if he's in that room, I, I wanna basically have that area kind of gotcha protected. All right. So you, so you drop your alarm on uh, Saint Cuthbert, yep. uh, but raise it there. Gotcha. Yep. All right. Um, he's all alone. He's all alone. So you guys settle back down into the sanctuary. Uh, who's taking the next watch? I'm going to sleep. Swift, are you standing guard? I my, can. I'm up, I'm up now. He's cutting out. Oh, I'll stand guard. Well. Yeah, Barrick will take a second, he said. All right. So um, uh, as your shifts passed, uh, you know, it's it's probably about three in the morning by this point, Barrick, and, and, and nothing seems to be going wrong. And Frederick walks up to you uh, and he, he kind of grumbles to you a little groggy and says, I'll take the last watch. Apparently he sounds like a dwarf right now. He didn't get too watch. much sleep. 
Uh, so then he he's gonna he's gonna watch the corner as you guys uh, finish your rest. Uh, very uninterrupted, uh, very peaceful. Uh, and as you guys slowly awaken, I'm I'm gonna need everyone to make a perception check. Oh man. Calliope has something too upon waking. Oh, swift eye. And a little groggy this morning. <laughs> My sinuses are all Stuff throughout the cold weather. Yeah. yeah. It is cool. chilly. I am quite cold. <laughs> be cool. Be cool. Be cool. Uh, so, Calliope, is there something you want to do before people are awaking? Yeah, so generally Calliope is like the last one to wake up. Like somebody has to like nudge her and be like, hey, <laughs> it's time to go. We're breaking camp. Um, but this morning, whoever wakes up first notices like, well, depending on how much attention they pay, she's like, Ballard. she's still in her like in her bedroll, but she's like rolled over on her side, kind of curled up. and She's whispering into her palm kind of agitatedly. Gotcha. So uh, on this day, it was Korak, who actually wakes up first. Mm. Um, right. I only sleep four hours, really? Yep, it's going to be Korak. Wow. So wow. Korak um, awakes, um, and I just want to make sure that everyone notices this before I... Yep, you're all going to notice a couple things at once. Uh, and, it's, sure. it, and everyone's going to kind of wake up very s- similarly at the same time. <laughs> Uh, Frederick is now currently just watching Korak, um, looking this way. Uh, and you notice that Korak's right hand seems to be raised out, uh, and outstretched. And in his hand, uh, he's holding a scroll. Um, as you guys, you know, notice this, you you start quickly looking around because this, this is very odd. And you're looking at the rest of your party, uh, and you notice that Beric, um, is is you know he's sitting he's leaning against the wall um and where his armor was once kind of scuffed from scuffles that he's run into and the mud is kind of splattered up around him and even though he is um you know radiant in his image he's become rather dull um just simply from traveling i'm sorry um however this morning the dragon blood that once uh smeared his shields is completely clean uh his hair is now neatly tied in a bun behind his head uh, his man armor bun. is, uh, is it, yeah, so it's a nice man bun. Probably one of the best nice. you've ever seen. Um, it's his, his armor is free of uh, dirt and grime, and he seems pristine in his appearance. Um, let's see. It looks like, well, Beric, you definitely notice. Uh, Valorant mm-hmm. and Swift Eye, unfortunately, you're not going to notice this. But Valorant, you're going to notice that upon his chest, uh, in front of the armor itself is uh, the symbol of Palor that you've now grown accustomed to. It seems to almost be attached to his chest, uh, and it, it is a, uh, a sun that seems to be enclosing um, what looks to be the size of the artifact itself. Uh, Beric, you are going to notice that uh, Calliope, not only is she wide awake and kind of rustling in her in her covers... Uh, she seems to be sweating slightly and very much on guard and agitated. And she she's turned away from me though. Is that uh, correct? Which way are you facing there, Calliope? Crack. The wall. Yeah. So you you can tell from like the back of her neck, uh, her hair seems kind of matted right. slightly, and her uh, overall appearance just seems like her whole her shoulders are hunched, and just, she just seems on edge. I'm gonna... uh, Abe, Abe, um, what did I notice about the symbol of Palor on Beric's chest? Uh, it's roughly the size of the actual relic itself that he's now been wearing. Uh, you you don't know of its origin, seeing as that you just kind of joined the party, but it's the same symbol that he cast his light upon on the dragon. Yeah. Um, and it, it seems to be the same size, but it is now shielding something. Uh, it almost seems to be embossing his chest. Is it like the Shard of the Sun? Do I notice that? Uh, yeah, it seems to be the exact same size, but it, it, it it's um, uh, covered. Interesting. So his relic is kind of covering up the Shard of the Sun. She's inferring this. She's making some like guesses as far as what's happening. Yeah, so it seems to be is almost, a reasonable uh, guess. You would guess that it seems to be a container in which the Shard of the Sun seems to fit into. If one uh, were a thief, how would one break into that? I'd make a perception check. Investigation? 
Uh, yeah, you can make an investigation. Um, yeah, with that role... Uh, yeah, I think like a thief to beat a thief. <laughs> it, it seems to be something that you've never truly seen before. Uh, it seems to be very intricate, uh, mm -hmm. and, and you're not even sure how it even operates, uh, because it seems very thin, um, though as you're looking at it, it seems very strong in its nature. Interesting. Cool. That's all I had. I'm going to uh, approach Calliope, and I'm going to kneel down and put one hand on her shoulder and say, Calliope? So she was... I think she was, like, so focused I shouldn't hear you coming. So she will jump. Okay. Um, and there is a squeak from her hand. And she, like, sits up and kind of, like, clutches her hand to her chest. Oh, what? Uh, uh, yeah? Is everything okay? Yeah. Yeah. Everything's fine. Let's roll out. Back to wherever we're going. Where are we going next? <laughs> Insight. <laughs> yeah, Swift she's, died. <laughs> she's a mess. Okay. Uh, yeah, you definitely can tell that she... Maybe she didn't sleep too well or just something caught mm -hmm. her off guard, but she just seems on edge. Not, not afraid by you, but just maybe just right. completely caught off guard. Are you sure... Oh, you know, just weird dreams, sleeping on rocks. There was a rock in my bed. I didn't sleep well. Got it got a weird rock in my back. Uh, with that, you're going to hear Cora go, dream? Who had a dream? Nobody. Nobody had any dreams. Why would I have any dreams? Who has dreams? Uh, he's still holding a scroll in his right hand, and he's going to go, I definitely had a dream. I'm going to offer a hand to Calliope and say, Oh, get up, friend. Pelor has blessed us with this day. And a purpose. What does, uh, what's the scroll look like in Korak's hand? Is uh, this a new scroll? Have we seen the scroll before? You have never seen the scroll before. Um, it, it, it's an older scroll. Um, sure. It has a, a red ribbon tied around it, almost a, a wax seal. Uh, and on the edges, make a perception check for anyone that wants to look at it. Hell yeah. I'll take it from him. I'll take it out of his hand if I can. Uh, you notice that it's a Vandegar seal. It's the same seal that's been emblazed uh, upon a shield uh, and chest. Oh, boring. <laughs> Never mind. She's not going to take it. Uh, I'm pretty sure Korak would open it. Um... Korak is going to very delicately break the seal and kind of pull it out. And it gives you a um, out of game context would be almost like a Chinese scroll where you kind of pull it up and it's, it's very well and uh, elaborate. It's inside a little, it's, it's inside a, like a little scroll case. Oh yeah. A little scroll case. Um, and as he pulls it out, he's just kind of like mumbling to himself. Um, and then at the end uh, he, he reads, um, ba -ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Hey, Korak, uh, what he, she got there? Uh, it seems to be a deed of sorts. Where'd you find it? It was presented in a dream from Corsindian himself. A dream gave you a scroll. Seems like it. <laughs> and then seems that. It seems like I am not the only one that was visited in my sleep. Son of a bitch. Am I the only one? <laughs> um, he's going to stand and brush himself off and say, and he's going to kind of tuck the scroll and say, well, it seems this castle now truly belongs to me. Nice. I'm going to make a sarcasm roll. <laughs> yep. I mean it. It's slightly sarcastic. He just he just goes, it is. It is. I pretty much fell for it. <laughs> <clears throat> Barak agrees. It's very nice. Little uh, 
elbow grease, spit, and vinegar, and really you're gonna stop and in the, and take care of a castle? Screw that. There's adventures to go on. Uh, perhaps, but it would be nice to have a place we call home, wouldn't it? Hmm. Base of operations. <laughs> no, I like the idea. But Valorin is also correct. There's more to be done. We must reunite the dwarf with his cave. <laughs> now, now, hold on a second. What's this? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. Uh, Mundar is afraid of going back home, and he has... He, in fact, doesn't really feel like... <sighs> Look, his brothers died, and... And... He's not sure what he's gonna do yet, and I think we owe it to him to, you know... Uh, like, at least help him find a place to land or whatever. That is wise. She looks, she looks like, awkwardly at the ground. That is wise and surprisingly noble of you. He can be I my agree. squire. <laughs> so much for noble. No. What? <laughs> I've always Lift wanted I a squire. Back. Lift, I will <laughs> stomp her quarterstaff down. No, he must be reunited with his own darkness. Then let it be so. We shall reunite the dwarf with his home, and then we shall continue our quest. You know, maybe someone in Pus knows where he came from. It's, it's really close. There's lots of people there. What makes you so sure about that? I'm not sure, but I mean, there are lots of people there. And if he was kidnapped, it probably from, was from somewhere pretty close to here. So maybe there are people who know where the hill dwarves come from. Is there a relic there? No. Insight, it's, insight, it's, insight. It's literally like <laughs> right next door. I uh, roll insight real well. You feel like right she's telling the truth. Uh, yeah. And Frederick pipes up and goes, I, I've heard it's a good place to restock. And it, it is right down the road. We're, we're right here. And I don't know when we're going to get another city next. I can't argue with that logic. Let's and, say the rest and, of you. And damn it, we do owe something to Mundar. He didn't need to charge in. She, like, clamps her mouth shut and looks down again. That much I can agree with. Uh, everyone make a perception check. Uh, swift eye on this one, you'll get your, uh, your bonuses. Bonus! God, I'm gonna need them. Oh, yeah, you will. Shit. Uh, so everyone but Bear... No, Bear occurred it. Uh, Calliope, you are just... Circle. You're still a little caught off guard. Uh, everyone else hears it that, um, there seems to be almost like a metal on stone noise, like a rhythmic, like, clang! Clang! Um, Shit. coming from the outside. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna run up there. Frederick, does something approach? I'm already gone. Uh, I haven't, I haven't heard anything. Um, are you, are you entering the castle proper, if you will? What's left of it? Uh, where's the clanging coming from? Uh, as you leave the sanctuary, uh, it, it grows slightly louder, um, as if this sanctuary truly was magically protected. Um, but as you enter the Valor castle, and wait, it, it, it too, only grows slightly louder. Definitely seems to be coming from outside. Yeah, she's going to head outside. Something's out there. I'm going to say out loud. Yeah, she, she's gone. And I'm going to pull my battle axe and follow. She casts mage armor as she runs. Uh, then Valorin, make a perception check. Okay. Making a lot of these. So far, so good. <laughs> <laughs> Jinxies. <laughs> Nice. Okay, so you run she's outside. She's also going to, uh, she's going to snap newly into existence also as she runs. Nice. Uh, so as you come out of the gate, you're hey, probably... If this motherfucking dwarf is already dead... <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be real mad. Uh, so you, you come out of the gate, uh, you're mm -hmm. roughly uh, here, uh, where okay. that circle is. Yep. Um, and the the... the, the it, it seems very rhythmic, but you can't... It seems to almost be echoing around the, the castle walls. Um, 
you could try to look around to see where it's coming from if you'd like. Um, actually, she's going to send Newly straight up in the air, and she thinks that'll be quicker. So she's going to send Newly sixty feet up and look through his eyes. Okay. So um, I will say by this point, you all have caught up with her. Um, her eyes, her eyes are rolled back. You guys have seen her like this before, where it's just the whites of her eyes. Uh, sorry, by this sorry, point, Swift-Eye. as as you That's all caught okay. up, it's usually just the whites of my eyes too. <laughs> Burn. Um, Quitting. Um, a- as you all catch up with her, by this point, uh, Nuli has reached the the pinnacle of his flight, and he looks down. She looks down, and you can see through her eyes the uh, the pinging comes from this area, right? Yeah. Yeah. Where the dwarf just seems to be pickaxing the side of the castle. Uh, Mundar. Uh huh. Shit. Is what she, is what is what she says. He's gone rogue. Um, she just He's points in that. Rogue. She points in that direction as her eyes roll back, roll back into place, and and she says. Mundar, he's. I don't. I think he's acting. Ah, damn it! She she runs that way. <laughs> All right, make another perception check. Sure. You're gonna make it a, like here. All right. Yeah. Uh, with that, as you as you come closer, uh, you're running at full speed, uh, concerned for this this newfound companion that you have uh, you know discovered, uh, and Mundar. Um, his hair is pulled back in a braid, and he is swinging a pickaxe over his shoulder at what looks to be a damaged wall. Um, as you run around the corner, you can see that part of the wall has now been replaced to its original grandeur, and he is now humming a, a, a jaunt of platoon. Hey, buddy. What you doing? Ah, oh, well, good morning there, lass. I've uh, kind of slept on it, and... Well, the Hill Clan are, are known for their for their ability to preserve the stone, and this is such a grand castle. And he kind of holds up his hands and looks at it and goes, It's only right I bring it back to its original nature, don't you think? Uh, he's going to work for Korak? Oh. What, <laughs> <laughs> you... She, she looks flabbergasted and just looks at the rest of the group. Well, it's it's good for a dwarf like me to have a good calling. And this is a mighty fine establishment. And he kind of slaps the side of it. A little bit of stone kind of crumbles away. What about your family? Uh, to be honest, we were the last three. He found us wandering the wastes. I didn't want to admit we were alone. Now it is... It's just me that is left of the hill tribe. Just you? Yeah. Like, do you have nobody left in your hill tribe clan home? Well, there was a plague that took most of us. The three of us were able to escape, and we wandered the wastes, only to be found by that bastard. And he kind of spits on the ground. But here... If he spits, too. (laughs) <laughs> I, I don't. I don't know what it is. I just feel it at peace, to be honest. What was the That's name of your clan? Said. Well, the Hill Clan. I th- I'm pretty sure I said that before. Oh, oh! I thought that was like a, uh, the sub. The name of the sub race. I, I didn't realize. I'm. I'm sorry. Is my name no. not good enough for you? That's no, no. It's, it's great. Radio. It's just books. You know, I read books and and stuff. No, it's it's awesome. I don't even know my last name, so. Books. <laughs> and he spits on his hand and rubs it and then grabs the pickaxe and just goes back to work. Yeah, exactly. She spits on her hand and rubs them together. Barrack's going to look at Korak. What say you to this, Korak? If this castle is truly yours. How are we going to pay him? How are we going to feed him? Well, the Vandegar are quite wealthy now, thanks to our, our uh, established lines of travel I and to be honest I feel like this this home needs to be brought back to its former glory uh, I'm sure we could find a way to reward him perhaps what say you Mundar perhaps you can live here call this your home too 
Uh, Mundra's going to kind of stop for a moment and put his pickaxe down. And... Ooh, 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 and we can call it the Fortress of Radiance. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Swing! <laughs> oh, man, that down. Uh, we, we uh, might we might want to ask Chris about that one. <laughs> well, well, we we can just call it we can call it that. He doesn't uh, have enough. Uh, Chris is gonna come back and be like, hey, oh, by yeah, the yeah, way, yeah, Castle Vandegar. Fortress you own a castle. We called it the uh, Fortress of Radius. Castle Vandegar. Uh, no big deal. <laughs> uh, the dwarf kind of looks at you a little odd and goes, Radiance. Well, it'd be nice to be out in the sun for a change. And he's just gonna go back <laughs> to his work. Shit. Um. Okay. 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 How many? How much supplies? Ellen kind of goes into planning, planning mode, and she asks the dwarf, "Okay, how, how much? How much supplies did you and your your brothers have whenever you got here? Do you have rations? I have. I have seventeen days of rations, and I'd be happy to leave you fifteen of them. But that's all I can do because I have to go to Puss if we're going to have to restock. And fifteen days is only fifteen days. I'm not even sure if we're going to be back in fifteen whoa, days. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Ah, what? Ah, I mean, there's pickaxes over here, and I, I'm sure I could." I'm not a wee one. I can fight for myself. I'm sure I'll make do. You know, it's an even better calling than fixing walls. <laughs> the noble profession of squirehood. Squirehood. Swift is just going to put her hand hand up in... Um, oh my gosh, Calliope's face and go, shush. <laughs> he's, 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 he has found Lord. his darkness. Um, do you mean light? It is all darkness to us. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, well, Mondo, if this makes you happy, then we will make sure that you are treated well. I, I thank you all. I, I'd like to find my peace here. <clears throat> Perhaps call this my life's work. If you don't mind, uh, and he kind of looks up, and there's just pieces of it falling away. I've got some work to do here. Valorin also makes a good point, Korak. Do you have connections in Pus that could provide us with supplies for this fortress? Uh, Perhaps we could even hire on some more help. Korag is going to uh, kind of look towards the group and uh, uh, say, to be honest, only the connection I've now uh, acquired is all I know. I have connections upon CISA, but perhaps we can find connections there. Perhaps it could be a good idea to go there. Or maybe we could go to Pus. <laughs> Just saying. It's right here. Wait, I thought we were looking for relics. We are. And that has not changed, but... Where's the next closest relic? Uh, the dwarf is going to get really close to you and go, What's a relic? I'm going to dump all my all my rations inside the little storehouse nearby. And I was like, oh crap, I'm out of relics. Or I'm out, I'm out of rations, we better go to pass. <laughs> <laughs> um, make, make a deception check? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm whoops them all out oh, oh yes wow. Wow. alright so here's what happens so <sighs> Valorin walks over here doesn't even walk in the doorway and just starts <sighs> undumping her book bag and goes well I'm out of rations I think we should go to Puss guys and just starts yep, walking right. off like it's about knee right. really high up in the air arms swinging wildly I'll see you in Puss right it just starts starts kind of walking away looking over his shoulder on the Pazubia map, what is the red circle? That's uh, where we are. That's where we are. Okay, Pazubia. I thought we were where the D20 is. Nah. Yeah, let me let me double check. I, I don't think Not. I moved the D20 last week. No, and the D20 was the, boom. There we go. The layer of the of the sun god. Yeah, you guys are very close to Puss. Oh, yeah. shit. Okay, I yeah, thought we're like we were... within half a day, I believe. Oh, no, we're sorry. really. Oh. I did not move. We're the, super uh, far from all the other relics. Yeah. We're at least like three or okay. four days. Okay, I was old. looking at where the D20 was no. and thinking we were up sorry. here. No, no, no. That would have yeah. been smart if I moved that. I didn't. My bad. Uh, if you Valor are... were so damn awkward, you might actually believe her that. Us, 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 right. Well, I was thinking, I was like, we're not even close. 
No, no, we are close. <gasps> okay. If she weren't so awkward, it might be believable that that's the reason she wants to go there. <laughs> In fact, now I can actually uncover this link. Bling! That's where you truly are. That green link that says Capital, <sighs> Castle Vandegar. Vandegar. It's also our, our map <sighs> link, just for the sake of it. So you can follow <clears throat> the river and find it. Yes, Fortress, <laughs> Fortress of Radiance. In fact, let me just go ahead and change this map name to uh, Fortress. I mean, maybe you should hold off on that until Chris okays it, because this is his castle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll, he'll be alright with it. He's sleeping, it's fine. I know, I know Chris. He'd be cool. <laughs> <laughs> we're going we're gonna to put it in quote. Quotes. <clears throat> Air quotes. There well, we Monder, now that you are our ally, I suppose that we can share with you our quest. There's 17 days of rations. I'm just gonna I'm gonna spill to him what why we are on this quest for the relics. I would uh, prophesy to can kill I, the like, dark cast mage hand real quick and put a mage hand over Barrack's mouth for a second. <laughs> I mean you can attempt it. Both uh Barrack, make a dexterity check and Valorant okay. roll for your mage hand. Arcana. Dexterity save or check, yeah, I guess. Arcana or like swift uh hand uh, oh yeah. Yeah, fourteen. Okay, oh, yeah. Oh, 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 so, oh, oh, oh. uh, so <laughs> Barrack, you start going. We are the Radiant Company, <laughs> and uh, uh, Mender just kind of stares awkwardly as there is your mage hand. Like, can you see it? Oh, it's visible. Yeah, there is just this glowing aura it's, hand. It's, it's, uh, it's like a big genie uh, hand. Stop talking, mumbling, and I'm gonna turn around and just kind of glare at Valorin. <laughs> She's giving you a her her patented be cool look, <laughs> and she says, "Hey, do you want to help me look at these rations before you say anything else?" And she jerks her head towards the room. Uh, Frederick is gonna go. Be cool. Be cool. Be cool. Be cool. <laughs> <laughs> Eric's going to continue to glare at her, but then move toward the room. Uh, once they're in there, uh, she will softly say, I mean, he seems cool and all, and I'd like to help him do whatever he wants to do in life, because, you know, all his family's dead and stuff. Uh, but, like, spilling all the beans right now and then leaving him alone? How does that seem like a good idea? You mean to say he can't be trusted? I mean, I don't this know. This dwarf who sacrificed everything to help us. I mean, I don't know. Uh, Perhaps. Well, you seem like a nice guy, and you also seem like a guy who hasn't worked with many shifty characters in your life. Perhaps some thing. of your old paranoias are continuing to cling. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, is that what she says? Yeah. <laughs> okay. She, she, she looks offended. She's like, I've seen shit, boy. And let me tell you, there are a lot of things. There are a lot of people who smile at you on the streets that will use every word you say to, say to their face against you when your back's turned. I once thought that of your brother, but it turned out that he was more noble than most people I've met. You gathered that in six days? <laughs> I have a good sense of people. Mm. Well, it seems like... that I have it seems that I've struck the ner a nerve a little bit. But look, I'm just saying be cool, man. Be cool, be cool. If he wants to work here, that's fine. But be cool, be cool. You don't have to tell him our life goal, right? Let him earn it. If it will bring you comfort. Then I will not share any more with him. Let me, let me logic to logic it to you this way: If you're right and you tell him, or if you're right and you don't tell him, then he's none the wiser, and he's happy to be here without knowing, anyways. If you do tell him and you're wrong, and we lost how much progress on our mission? Maybe we lose a relic. Maybe we lose all the relics. Think about it, man. What do you have to gain versus what do you have to lose? Very well. I will hold my tongue if it will give you peace. It would. 
<laughs> I'm gonna leave the storeroom. And actually, as she's out. about to, uh, she was kind of about to walk out, and she stops and says, "Look, I know that you guys were happy with Harm being here, and apparently, all you and your little gang are getting dreams and whatever. But I want to help." And she like looks around awkwardly and then walks out. I believe you. I'll follow her out. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> in the meantime, Cork has been talking to uh, Fuck. Bender about uh, all the relics. <laughs> uh, all the relics that he's telling him about <laughs> everything that's gone on. No, he's uh, uh, basically the gist of the conversation is, um, you know, uh, you're more than glad to fix my home. Uh, now that I've discovered it to be mine, uh, and perhaps we can strike a deal when last when next we see each other. And they've kind of you know, shook and shaken hands, and uh, you know, Mendar has uh, kind of strolled off to continue to repair the fortress. <clears throat> Abe, I just happened to have bought a book that's about building a stronghold <clears throat> and attracting followers. Just saying. <laughs> Just saying. I sent you the link. It's in my Google Drive. Nice. If you want it, it's pretty bitchin'. It's just so I remember that Mendar lives here. Mendar the oh, Mendar the Hill Clan. Um, Mendar the last right. of the Hill Clan. Yeah, I should, apparently his last name. I should actually. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna change that. The nice. last of the Hill Clan. Please, then. Boom. All right. There we go. All right, so uh, the party after a, a very awkward conversation and, and <laughs> weird, weird separation Lances. from the party, um, <laughs> have you decided a next course of action? Yeah, Valorant looks at the party and says, "So, you guys ready to go to bus? <laughs> I am totally out of rations." <laughs> I believe it would be wise to resupply, and Puss seems to be the closest place to do so. She gives him the double finger guns and says, my man. <laughs> he's going to just glance at her and then he's going to look to the rest of the company and say, but we are a company. So everyone's opinion counts. And I'm going to look back at Valorant <laughs> meaningfully. <laughs> uh, uh, Korak and Frederick give a, a, a knowing nod. Strange. Calliope? Silent. Uh, Calliope Does Calliope shrugs, look yeah. any better? Or is she still kind of? She, she looks. Better. She looks better. She looks okay. distracted, but she's definitely less like jumpy and weird. Yeah. Yeah, she looks better, just a little bit distracted. Good. Uh, yeah. I mean, I can. I'll, I'll line up a gig. Go make some money. I've got a bunch of stuff we can sell. Good. Swift Eye. You're gonna love pus. <laughs> Swift Eye. Oh no! Are you yes. awake? Okay. Swift okay. <laughs> <laughs> so meditating. I, um, I never sleep. I just meditate for long periods of time. Sometimes I snore while I meditate. <laughs> uh, yes. Swift Eye is also going to hold out like four rations and try to be like towards Valorant. Be like, I have extras. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. no, that won't I be necessary, suppose... Swift Eye. Valorant's rations are on the ground over there. <laughs> well, you don't want him to starve. Gosh, Barrett, you want him to starve? Uh, no, while you were away, I gave him some more rations, so I've taken care of it. <laughs> to pus we go. Good. And, Frederick, you've been awfully quiet. What say you? <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> does, does Mundar want to come with us to help like pick out a work team to help him work on the keep perhaps we could purchase a work team and send it back to the keep yeah well, sounds what? like slavery but okay <laughs> indentured servitors hire, hire some work uh, uh, <laughs> Mundar has already started just working away he's, he's very much entranced in his work listen dude dude knows what he wants Dude wants to hit a wall with he a pickaxe. Uh, he's, he's building it. He wants to use some some mortar and some rocks. Yep. Abe, does Calliope know anything about pus? Uh, having traveled as much as you have, uh, you, you know it's a, a pretty 
big city. Uh, even though it's the port union of Cinderin, it, it, it's um, not necessarily right on the water, though it seems to be from a massive uh, uh, river stream. So you know it's a pretty good tr um, trading port, if anything else. So y you know it'd be worth traveling to. Okay. Does she know of a particular like inn or tavern that would be welcoming of a of a bard? Uh, yes. Um, if memory serves me correctly, the Mellow Dandelion is where okay. you want to go. Oh, yeah. Awesome. awesome. In name. I'm going to turn to Valorant. Before we leave, we should determine what our next step after Puss is. We are still on a quest for these relics, and you seem to know where they are housed. You are the one that led us here. Where will we, we be heading next after Puss? I mean, there's a few options as far as I remember. Um, there is... Da, 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 da. Um, there's one far to the west past the rivers. Um, I don't know exactly where that is, but if we head in that direction, we might be able to gather some information past the rivers. I'm assuming that means west past Sisa. Uh, there's one to the north near Porvi. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. So I well, know those two. If we go to Puss, Puss is a port city, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's very possible to catch a boat to Sisa. Sure. And then head beyond the rivers there. I mean, it'll, it'll cost. But we're us also money. in the so we're also in the general vicinity of Porvi. Could head north after Puss. Sure. And head for that relic. Sure, sure. A conversation we'll have later. Dave, Let's go. I would. I, I think. I feel like I need to. I need to roll this. Okay. You, you know what I'm. You know. What, oh, that was a natural one, but it was outside the box. Luckily for me, that's a little bit better. <laughs> it's now noon. There, uh, Swift Eye. Yep. <laughs> in case you didn't see that in the, the chat box. It's now noon. It is now noon. <laughs> it is now noon. <laughs> noon o'clock. The sun is wasting. Barrack's going to head to the stables. Oh, wait. We never brought our horses in, huh? Nope. They are currently in a grove outside of the castle. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to go get St. Cuthbert, and I'm going to bring him to the stable and kind of prep him. You know, cog, <laughs> it off, all that kind of stuff. It, it probably would take you about an hour, an hour and a half to do it. I'll bring all the horses if I'm, if I'm going out there. Hold on. I'll try to lead them all in. Noromath. Uh, roll an animal handling. Oh, I'm <laughs> all over that. This could be the one, Dane. This could be it. This is the one right here. Boom. All right. Yeah, yeah, that was bad. That's yeah let's, let's just see what happens. <clears throat> yep, you, you uh, very easily, uh, almost as if they, they seem calm in this glade that they've been resting in. That's um, my shiny armor. It is also because you are very cleanly dressed. Mm -hmm. uh, easily... <laughs> Uh, wander them out. In fact, it, you're only leading St. Cuthbert. The rest of you just seem to follow in wow. a great herd and you Ooh. easily bring them to the rest of the party. Nice. Cool. Oh, shit. And I'm going to take the inside. hour or whatever it is to, to prep St. Cuthbert. You're being sketchy about something. I don't know. <laughs> and I figured like, if I beat you by a lot, then maybe Calliope would have picked up on something even not paying a lot of attention. Alright, so... Um, I will say that uh, Korok uncovered that after talking to Munder that uh, the city of Puss is not far away. Uh, so if you left your 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 steeds, it would probably take you to you know mid afternoon. If you took them by horse, it would just take a quick amount of time. So it's up to you. I guess we leave our steeds here. We don't have to worry about them getting uh, stolen or. Crushed by hill giants. <laughs> um, you know, common, common concerns. Korak looks to the party and says, "Is that our plan?" Wait a minute. You said you said there were three relics you knew about. Hmm? Earlier, <laughs> you said there were three relics you knew about. Three what? Did I? Yeah, we got one of them. No, or because first you said there were four, and then we got one, which leaves three. Uh, Calliope's connecting dots. M make a knowledge check, Calliope. 
I just told her out of character. Cause she, she beat my she beat my deception. Okay, good. <clears throat> oh, see. The, um what what? Oh, you're talking about the relic near Ashvelin. Oh, right. Yeah, that's the fifth one. Um, yeah, yeah. I guess there's one there too. <laughs> there was oh, a conversation about trust. Oh, yeah, I'm not here. I'm not Wait, here. I'm at the, the fifth table. one. All right, so we got one. There are five now. Just a second ago, you were only talking about three. You said three. Plus one. Is four, but now I you're feel like <laughs> our math discussions are in two different wavelengths. Listen, here. how many relics do you know about? I researched. She she like sighs. <sighs> I researched. I'm counting, so I don't lie. <laughs> I never lie. I researched four. But apparently you guys already found one, so I guess that's five. So four so four in addition to the one we found. Yeah. But like I don't think Ash Rellin's a good choice. Okay, hold up. So <laughs> the one across the rivers. Yeah. The one at Porzy Torzy Puddin and Pie. Poor V. Yes. The one Torzy, with the elves. Torzy, 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 and what about and where's you guys the have been reading a lot. <laughs> Uh, this one we just got at Puss, Orvi, Ashvelin, and Past the Rivers. Right, St. Cuthbert was too. Okay, so why is an Ashvelin a good idea? <sighs> Look, I hear it's the elves there are, are really nasty, especially towards other elves that aren't their kind. So you're scared. Fuck you. <laughs> Burn. Second time. That's, that's just what she says when she has nothing else to think of. <laughs> well, I've heard that they're, the elves aren't what they seem. So it probably bears some looking into. And eventually yeah. we're going to need to get all the relics, right? Where did you hear that from? Stories, songs. I'm a bard. I hear things. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> She, she just looks around, and she's, like, doing some mental math for a second, and says, whatever. I mean, I'll come with you. You guys are, like, the heroes or whatever. So angsty. Wait, uh, is that really why you don't want to go? Because of the elves? Yeah. Why? Shut up. <laughs> I'm not scared. You're scared. Uh, uh, all right. Well, just so the record shows, there's also a relic in between Porvi and the rivers that we should look into. <laughs> Post pus. Somewhere in there. Post pus. Uh, meanwhile, Frederick walks over to Barrick and goes, "So, um, do you need any help with these horses? <laughs> I just, I feel like I need to get out of that conversation." Um, <laughs> And he just Help would be appreciated. Thank you. Patting down the horses. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hand him a brush. <laughs> oh, oh, thank you. Uh, All right. So to to pus, Korax. I guess we're gonna pus. Horses or no horses, guys. How sorry? How far did we decide it was? Uh, with horses, it's it's probably uh, like a quick journey like maybe 30 minutes to 40 minutes uh walking uh you know you're you're talking about maybe an hour two hours something like that depending on how oh. fast you want to ride your horses well if we take our horses we'll have to stay I'm, we're spending the night right oh definitely yeah. <laughs> i mean we have this really nice fortress that we can always go back to stay it's free a shithole <laughs> i mean the outside is a extremely bad. It seems like the most of the damage seems to be done on the inside, but the the castle itself on the inside seems to be taking the most of the damage. Less than twenty four hours ago, there was a a, a, a 
shadow dragon of ultimate <laughs> evil living in here. Seriously? I mean, yeah, but I mean, that's dead now. <laughs> don't get me wrong; it's a lovely fortress, but the one thing it seriously oh, lacks. No, it's fine. It's fine. Is we'll an audience. <laughs> that is a good point. I awesome haven't heard you play in earnest in a long time. It would be good to hear again. And we need more workers for for Mundar. One man, one one dwarf. No matter how good he is, sorry, dude, isn't gonna be able to do work super fast. Well, then fast. I believe we should take the horses in order for us to be able to carry more supplies. All right, that's gonna mean stabling them for the night, but I can work that into my <laughs> plan. Busy schedule. Yeah. All right. So I'm gonna take mount the Saint Cuthbert, the horse. <laughs> That's just how Saint Cuthbert talks. <laughs> Talk horse to you. <laughs> <clears throat> he has a very noble neigh. Yes. Sometimes it comes out. <laughs> or neigh. <laughs> neigh. Neigh. I said neigh. <laughs> neigh. Uh, so you guys mount up. Let's mount up. Mm-hmm. All right. Suit so, up, mount up. Uh, you mount up, and uh, uh, Korak kind of got some information, seeing as that he he uh, uncovered through the conversation that uh, Mender has gone to Puss several times to you know mend his pickaxes and whatnot, and gives you a pretty good direction of where to go. Uh, and and um, you know based on his description, very quickly. Um, probably in about 40 minutes, maybe an hour tops. Um, you know, every now and again, Swift Eye kind of chimes out a time. 12.45! <laughs> um, uh, and very quickly, you get, to, you get to the surrounding city, uh, kind of the, uh, the area that you know of as Pass. i got to bring the map. Pass! Pass! Sharing link! Um... And as you enter this uh, this pretty massive uh, stone walled city, uh, the outskirts are just you know kind of shabby little houses, not not bad looking, just you know maybe of a lesser quality, maybe not so well off, could be farmhands whatnot living on the outskirts of town. Um, and as you slowly approach the area, you come up the main thorough drag, which is this a direction. Um, up to the city gate, which is now currently guarded uh, by there we go. Uh, a couple of uh, guardsmen, uh, both of elven uh, descent, and they say, "Good day to you, friend. Welcome to the port, Union of Sindarin. What brings you in on this fine day?" We seek passage into your city. Ah, well, of course. Uh, now you'd be um, <laughs> parking your horses, will you? Stabling them, yes. Ah, stabling, yes, of course. Uh, well, it it uh, you know, just be. Uh, let's see, there's a uh, um, six of you. Um, it'd be six silver pieces to stable your horses, and of course, we'll give you tags to uh, reclaim them when you're ready. <laughs> oh, you take. Well, that for seems us. fair. Well, of course, this is a, a proper town. What do you know? horse check. Call us here, pus. We'll give you a ticket for your horse. <laughs> that would flip some of gold. Are we, should we, are we supposed to tip them? How does this work? I just did. I gave him a gold. Uh, he oh, kind of okay. looks at it. He, like, bites on a little bit and goes, well, of course. <laughs> well, for that, we'll leave them. Bathe your horses. Uh, now, if I could just get your names. And he quickly, like, scribbles down all of your names, unless you tell him differently. I tell him a different name. Uh, what is the name that you tell him? Alorin Gwendalian. Excellent. So he starts. I tell him Barak Paladin of Palor. Paladin of Palor. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Calliope does a dramatic bow and like shakes her tambourine. Calliope Farstrider. You may have heard of me. Uh, are, are you here? the same Farstrider for the last? Uh, well, let's see. That was a pub, that was a pub and entertainment. Uh, I, I think I lost quite a bit of wages, and the, and that gentleman stormed out of it. Whoa! I haven't drank that good in ages. <laughs> you can't <laughs> the, be the same Calliope. Yep. That 
Pass yep. on. <laughs> yeah, and I will my my cloak billows, and I will say performing tonight at the Mellow Dandelions. <laughs> oh well, I mean, I and he and he looks and he's his wrist that there clearly is not a timepiece on. And he looks to the sun and he goes, "Well, I think I get off soon. I I, I, I think I want to come to that." Well, I will keep an eye out for you. Uh, 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 and he shouts to his friend from the corner, and he goes, uh, uh, "Treat this one quite well." And he and he stables the horse off in the corner, and he kind of uh, hands you a different color um, tag than the rest. Uh, it seems oh. to be kind of emblazoned with a different color. Oh. Um, and uh, yeah, he continues to write down all the names, and he goes, "Oh, wait, 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 wait." Uh, Calliope kind of caught me off guard here. I've got to apologize. Um, the Chancellor herself, as as um, well, she's she said that anyone that comes into the city has to come see her. Something about some evil she sensed. Uh, uh, well, um, I, I hate to I hate to bother you all, but well, I've got to take you straight to the castle itself. You can lead us to the good Lady Chancellor. Oh. Oh, thank God. There's been many a fight this afternoon, and quite frankly, I'm a bit tired, so I'm really glad that, uh, well, you're just coming quite freely, so thank you so, so thank you very much. Uh, obviously, this is quite Lady uh, Calliope. Oh, it has to be the, uh, the, 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 brilli the brains of the company. Well, uh, well, well this way, this gentleman. <laughs> and he starts leading you into the, into the city. I'm gonna uh, wait. She worried let... about. Oh. I'm gonna wait and let Calliope pass and so she can lead us <laughs> yeah she'll she'll chat him up while we go <coughs> I'll follow. Going with this is everyone yeah, going gonna go with us obviously listen yeah, Valorant, we'll be cool <laughs> we'll be cool, be cool, we'll be cool. Be cool. <laughs> i am uh, i am quite cold <laughs> so i just sharpens over the rest of the crowd i am very cold actually <laughs> cool. um, so i would uh, say maybe calliope sees Valorant start starting to cast a spell i don't know if she would stop her all right. Shit. I was hoping you would stop her. Uh-uh. Cool. Oh god. Okay. What do you I mean, what do you cast? Unless in there? you're doing it really uh, noticeably, I don't think anybody will notice. She's gonna cast a minor illusion to make the uh the sounds of someone shouting down the street uh, at approximately a range of oh not very far, thirty feet. Of okay. someone yelling, Help, help, I'm being oppressed. I'm being repressed. <laughs> what's help, what's help, the we're being oppressed? What's the DC on your spell? Uh, it's a minor illusion, so the sound just happens. Okay. Um, um, if if they're if they're investigating it, it would be a DC of fifteen. Okay. Um, the 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 young elf that seems to be kind of uh transporting you guys uh looks to his friend that's uh hovering to his left and go. I'll go investigate that. I don't know what the hell is going on at this time of hour, but I've got a mission to do. And he just continues to kind of lead you down the streets. And then he, um, Calliope, you hear him go, oppressed, what the hell? <laughs> um, and he's just going to keep walking you to, uh, walking you to the castle. Um, as you guys are entering the, uh, the, the, the castle proper, the, uh, city proper, you're, you're crossing a, a street or two. Um, let me, uh, let me get a little, little, um, uh, visual aid here. Andy, um, is Val Valoran following, or is she, she stopped if, outside if the gate? If she saw an opportunity, she probably would have tried to slip away, but it doesn't okay. sound like she actually has much of an opportunity. No, the guard, the guard is taking his role, even though he's kind of awestruck by Calliope and, and the, mm -hmm. the things that he has seen in his past, uh, at Torcindio, um, he is not one to kind of give up his post. So he's still watching you guys irely, but uh, yeah. So uh, as you enter the city proper, uh, you know, and the, the guard himself that hasn't even introduced himself, he's just uh, kind of telling you about the city itself and that it's a, it's a stronghold. Uh, it's a nation primarily made up of elves, uh, though um, it's a peaceful city. And it's open to all walks of life, whether it's dwarfs, gnomes, humans, or orcs. Uh, and it's a quite wealthy city, and over the centuries has uh, dropped its formal name uh, of the Port Union of Sindarin, uh, and just simply gone by pus. To make it a little easier on, uh, you know, the unknown folk. Um, since, uh, unknown long folk. since, has the Republic of its people called the Chancellor Nororus uh, resident, uh, resides over the Port Union of Sindarin. Nororus? Uh, Nor Nororus, yes. Nororus. Uh, 
uh, N O R R O R I S, Nororis. Um, she oversees the city, the port, and more notably the sovereign state that is refuge to all elves uh, and all other races and, and kin. And, and he speaks very highly of her uh, as he slowly leads you, um, you know, at a, at a normal pace through the city uh, and eventually uh, ending at the actual castle itself. Uh, to, to where you're greeted by uh, by several guards who the um, original guard kind of mentions. You know, they're new to the city, and, uh, you know, as per the Chancellor herself, she's got to be seen by these people. Uh, I don't know, something about some great evil. Not my job. I'll see you later. And he just well, kind of, like, stumbles the, off. On the way to the castle, Calliope wants to ask him a couple of questions. Oh, okay. I will allow this. <laughs> so, what's this... Tell me more about this evil the Chancellor is worried about. Oh, I'm in the hell of I know. I'm just a simple city guard, but she kept talking about some castle to the north, some evil that's presiding over it for quite some time. And, well, I don't know. She's been insistent on, on seeing people, but I don't know. Rumor has it this evil's been vanquished and she hasn't sensed it no more. Uh, that's more the reason she wants to see everyone, I guess. Just to see if, uh, well, they know of what happened. You're the evil now. You're in luck. <laughs> so she talks every single person who comes to town? Well, not always. Uh, to be honest, it just was a recent occurrence. She wanted to be aware of anyone that's uh, kind of new and, and wanted to inspect them by the guards, but... Uh, well, quite frankly, as of this morning, uh, her, main, her main people came down and said, Hey, anyone that comes in, she wants to see them in person! Sure, I, I say to my friend, what the hell? I mean, she ain't never done this before. I mean, it's a peaceful town and all, but... It what is the a hell peaceful she town. To know? What the hell is she thinking? Exactly, it is a peaceful town, but you know what? I take my job quite seriously. Oh, well, my day ends. well, today is her lucky day and your lucky day because you got to be a part of this moment. What's your name? <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Calliope <laughs> wants to know my name. Oh, my goodness. Uh, well, they call me Sven. Uh, I'm just a simple elven man. I, I guard the city well. Well, Sven, the evil has indeed been vanquished. And oh. we have done the vanquishing. And, and you're looking you at the vanquishers. the one who gets to escort us to the Chancellor to let her know that the evil has been vanquished. So you spread the word and you tell people Calliope Farstrider of the Radiant Company has vanquished the evil and will be performing tonight at the Mellow Dandelion. <laughs> <laughs> and if anyone wants to hear the tell the tale of the evil, they should bring a friend and money for drinks. As soon as I get back to my post, I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna I'm gonna say on the spread of the word, and I will see you tonight, Miss Calliope, and well, well the rest of you. I'm sure I'll catch your name eventually. But uh, anyways, well we're here at the castle, and uh, well. Well, hey, 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 hey. and he starts like telling everyone about what happened and uh, who you guys are, and there's kind of this awe struck in their eyes, but uh, uh, immediately they're kind of uh, uh, remembering that their their duty lies to the the, the ports port union of Cinder in itself, uh, and and even though they are awestruck, they are taking their guarding duties quite seriously. But every now and again, you hear them whispering about Calliope and her band of uh, Radiant Company defeating a great evil. Um, as they walk you to um, the um, the Great Hall, it seems. Be well, Sven. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, of course you do. <laughs> uh, I didn't catch you. <laughs> never. It's <laughs> fine. I got your, uh, you got your ticket, so it's going to be fine. I wrote it down. Anyways, Calliope, it will be great seeing you later tonight. <laughs> I, uh, I wish you all well. And he kind of just kind of jumpers <laughs> off, uh, and Clive, you notice that as, as he walks down the street, he, he gives a nice jump in the air, and his and his, and his heels kind of click a little bit, and he goes uh, nice. away. That is uh, not an elf, that is a <laughs> leprechaun. <laughs> <laughs> leprechaun elf, you know, what's the difference? Um, so, <laughs> you guys you guys find yourself on the entrance um, of a great hall um, uh, corridors. So the doors themselves have... Uh, it's okay. Have slowly. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not the best hall you've ever seen, but it's okay. Uh, the great halls themselves uh, slowly open. Uh, at the at the long end of a corridor uh, sits a, a an elf. From this distance, it's hard to make out very well what she looks like. Um, but you know, she she is an elf, um, nonetheless. 
and I have to jump to where I actually belong. Here we go. Um, so as you're walking down the corridor, um, she holds herself quite high. She sits on, on the back of a very high-end chair uh, to a very open central chamber. The windows are open, and you can hear the calling of, of birds, um, you know, not only sea birds, but, uh, you know, air fly, flying birds uh, in the breeze. Um, as you get closer, uh, she's holding a book in her hand, and she's it, it's a leather bound in nature, and it's quite old, uh, you know, even uh, to Valorant, you notice it may have been one of the oldest books you've ever seen, even in your history lessons. Um, uh, mm-hmm. On top of her head is a circlet of rubies and silver, and she wears a black flowing dress. Her face is stone in expression. Her mm-hmm. head is, is completely bald, uh, easily showing her two pointed ears. And as you are closer, she raises her right hand, palm facing you, and saying in a fair voice, Hi, Kararan Sharvaran. Welcome, travelers. Welcome to the wondrous port union of Sindarin. I am Chancellor Dororus. If you seek my presence, the knowledge you must seek, how may I? And she pauses and looks at each of you. As her focus narrows and her gaze hardens, she begins to speak slowly, directing to each of you. And Beric, she looks to you first and she says, and she says uh, A champion touched by Paylor himself. And she kind of pans over to uh, Calliope and says, A tongue of silver tutored by the old. And she pans to Korok. And says, chosen guardian of the truth. To Swift Eye, she says, the one who sees all. And to Valoran, she looks kind of questioningly and says, one touched by the authority of the goddess of the moon herself. And then lastly, she stops upon Frederick and pauses, staring at him for a long while and says, Who's this asshole? And one. (laughs) (laughs) Who'll be this guy? What the hell? Uh, to one who am, is still torn Stand whether he, we love you. <laughs> one who is still torn whether he is the champion the prophecy speaks of. Curious. So they can choose their own fate. And she kind of pauses for a moment. Greetings, Lady Chancellor. Ah, greetings, my fellow champion. Upon entering your city, we it was requested that we come seek your presence. Ah, uh, yes. Sit down, sit down. And and she kind of clicks her fingers, and there's uh, just people out of the woodwork come out of nowhere and bring in these uh, very uh, well-constructed carved wooden stools with uh, green moss and back and, and very soft-looking seats. And, and she welcomes you all. Sit down, sit down, sit down. I'll sit. No, yep. no, really? It's okay. Sit down. Uh, I fear we may be here long. No, oh, I'll sit. Um, so she be, she kind of draws a long breath and says, I am Elder. One of us has been long witnessed the fall and rise of many generations, as well as the birth of an evil born from lust. Yes, my children, I know... <laughs> Of the terror born, <laughs> born from lust, and uh, even with that, she she almost kind of spits on the floor, but kind of holds back. <laughs> yes, I I know of this terror, Maravas, though he is gone by many a names. Maravas is his original, the beginning. Come, it is not. It is time that I fear that you must know the truth, or at least as much as I can remember. In my youth, I have traveled from Bonasira the northeast of the country to the Pasubia. Having heard of the wonder and the riches of Gwen, I was quite curious. Well, I was very young, and, well, several generations ago, I was a little too curious. Before I came to rest at the head of Pus, and she kind of opens her arms and, you know, kind of takes in the the area. Uh, Oh, man, I didn't even show you the picture of uh, Nororus. Nororus herself! There we go. Um... There we go. Um, I lost my palies. Um In Gwen, I went to visit Marvas. He was quite handsome, even for an elf. Tall and wise, but had a taste for treasure and wine and women. Well, I stayed a time at the castle 
of Gwen when his misfortune would have it a plague descended upon Gwen itself, leaving only a few. I left in haste, only to discover that Maravas was one who, shall we say, survived. Only out of pure lust did he live. He destroyed his castle and town and wrecked the land. But it was not the first to cast his stone. Muravas brought to its knees anyone still alive. He simply slaughtered. It was many years later that I came across the strange seer, not of this world. I'm sure of it. There in the center of Siza itself, he cast a prophecy. Many were around there to that day to hear it, but... Well, alas... I may be the last alive to say it. Uh, and she takes a very deep breath, uh, kind of calming her nerves, uh, and her eyes kind of close, uh, as if trying to recall something long since remembered. And she starts to repeat. When the land falls to dismay and the light fades into decay, there a crowned evil appeared and the souls of the good slowly disappeared. Find the one touched by Palor, just and light in his heart will adore. Seek the one of the silver tongue, tutored by the one who is long, no longer young. Locate the family long forgotten, who the saint of truth knows be to be rotten, unrotten. From the darkness she will see one whose parents abandon, now absentee, appearing on a hill. And so in tuned, children touched by a goddess of the moon. Gather last one, who's found among the ring. Now there six can end the demon king. Radiant the six are thee, assisted by the gods they will ever be. Only when the six are found will the evil truly be uncrowned. And then the radiant will be renowned. Time um, out, Abe. Did you write that yourself? Uh, I did. That was really good. Yeah, English kind of uh, paid off in the long run in college, so boom, okay. stay in school, kids. Well done. That was pretty cool. <laughs> uh, and she, with that, she kind of uh, opens her eyes slowly, uh, and I think I may have shared that with the party, but there you go. Just you so did. there. Um, uh, she kind of takes a deep breath, uh, and she looks to all of you and says, So what do you know of these relics, children? Calibi kind of looks around. I mean, we can totally trust her, right? She knows all about us. Derek yeah. will step forward at that and say, <laughs> We know as much as you've told us. The six of us, I'm willing to back into the rest of the company. Actually, I'm going to do a quick insight check on her. I'm assuming <laughs> okay. she's... Yeah. Are destined uh, to defeat uh, this evil. Anyone else who wants to roll insight, by all means. <laughs> Uh, Beric's just going to up and trust this lady. <laughs> Beric is all about trusting. Yeah, Aelor, yeah, be light. Uh, that's on brand. On brand. <laughs> yeah, that's perfect. Uh, Calliope, uh, you, you definitely sense that she speaks the truth. Uh, and Valorin, though you, you kind of watch your eyes, uh, knowing what you do about people that lie, she, she almost looks through you. Uh, yeah, I mean, her her portrait is, like, bearing through my soul right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Almost through the, into your heart, uh, and you, it, it, it's hard for you to look away from her, um, and, and you can't imagine her to be lying. This definitely comes from, from her soul itself. We have recovered me. two of the relics so far. Two which we know of. Then all is not lost, my children. <clears throat> the shard of Pelor, and I'm gonna tap the symbol on my chest. Wee. And the <laughs> <laughs> and the pendant of Saint Cuthbert, and I'm going to back into Korak. He's gonna kind of shrug. Silent. The rest, uh, the rest of the relics are a mystery to us. Though one in our company knows their location, and I'm gonna look toward Valorin. <laughs> Valorin has been like, just like. <laughs> glaring at herself, but also like <laughs> this, weird, back. this weird mixture of like distrust, but also like she really wants to ask her a million questions. Um, ah, little one, I, I can see that you have many a question. I is assure this a, you. A moon elf? Is this uh, a moon elf? Or I, I need to know. Make a perception check. Sure. 
You said I, she had a ruby circlet? She did have a ruby circlet. I will say on her head. On her head. Uh, based <laughs> on uh, her age, the fact that yeah. she even knows and was present, uh, you would imagine that perhaps her skin has kind of faded and her, her youth, uh, though it's still present, you can see there's slight lines uh, uh, in, in her skin, but you, you know from your reading that moon elves seem to not age the same way that other people do. They just seem to disappear ah. from knowledge and stories. Sure. So you get the feeling she could in fact be a moon elf. Okay. So what is she what is she saying? Oh, uh, she is going to look to you and say, "Though I don't know all about all the relics themselves, I, I can give you this, and hopefully you find it helpful." The locations that I know of is north of Pravi, uh, one near the capital of Ashthelon, and one to the west past the rivers. Since long lost, and one uh, lost, hidden by a family, and she kind of turns to Korak, once forgotten. Though I see that family is no longer forgotten. It is nice to see another Vandegar, my child. She kind of nods to him. Um, he's going to stay awkwardly quiet. Uh, perhaps I can shed some light. But the only one I know is of earth and water. You see, it was my sister whom you seek in the trees of darkness in the deep. She, for some time, was beautiful and lovely, but something or someone long corrupted her. Now people fear her woods. There perhaps may be a way to, sl to sneak into Ashvelin, and perhaps I could help if, if you'd like. She kind of hesitates. Um, and then she's going to continue and say, There is a cave long we built that I could visit my sister. It lies deep underground, but it has been, been more than 300 years since I last wa walked its walls. For now, I am here and cannot leave. I have things I need to do for the, the grand place of Pus. You see, the dwarves helped us build it. It had massive mine carts and led the way quite easily in just several days' journey, but parts of it may still in fact be working. There once was a temple, you see, of the goddess Safanian Moonbrow. She would have placed a relic there, I, I would no doubt it. It is the only place that my scholars could in fact research to find such a place. If there is in fact a relic in her woods... Long since protected by a chosen champion, by the goddess herself. Uh, last thing I, I can offer is just simply my thanks. I know, in fact, meeting you, that the only ones that could kill that evil that lurked in the, the castle of Vandegar would be you. And to that, my city and myself owes you a thanks and a debt. And she pulls out a bag from the table and holds it aloft. Yeah, yeah. does it jingle? Uh, it definitely jingles, and it's a pretty big bag. Does it jangle? It jangles as well. It kind of jingles and jangles yes. as she sways. Barrack's uh, going to put his hand over his chest and say, Your thanks and your wisdom is reward enough. Kalei's going to reach out for the bag. <laughs> hey. But resources are also much appreciated and needed and she will take the bag oh we'll uh, definitely be able to do much more good with this gold she she kind of releases her hand and there is a heavy like of the of the coins clinking in your in your hand nice i'm gonna get back Clive's to that in a moment tuck it into a cloak uh and she's gonna say and perhaps some more knowledge of where you can find and she kind of looks at everyone Barrick, she stops at you and, and is kind of taken aback and then looks at everyone else in a slightly bit of disgust and go, some much better equipment. Listen Ouch. well. Uh, <laughs> in my fair city, you will find Elviana. She's at the general store. Perhaps you can find pretty much anything you'd want. You've got Elmer. He's a blacksmith. And Volvin, uh, Volwin. She's an armor. Quite good, in fact. You got... You got blinkies. Don't don't look at her eyes. Uh, 
She, she <laughs> not look her in the eye. She's a magic shop, of course. And of course, well, they're the markets, but um, as much as it pains me to tell you, and she, there's this just drop in her appearance. Watch your pockets in the markets. Even though my guards are quite good, they cannot watch in the crowded streets. But you could find some quite tr some good good things there. And of course, you can always find lodging in the temple or uh, you know Tomcats Inn. Uh, that's the uh, the dandelion, of course. And if you wish to talk more of uh, you know anything, I I'd be more than glad to be of service. And uh, if you do need assistance getting into the secret passage of the dark wood, I could in fact let you into uh, the secreties as long as it would help in your your fightings. With that, she kind of pauses and looks around the group. I'm sorry if I missed it, Abe. Did she mention what the temple in the city was, too? Uh, she did not, but uh, I will say you can make a history check. Huh. Yeah, Plus what I religion, learned about whichever. that in the, in, the te in the monkery. You can make a history check. Monastery. That's my word. Monkery. Oh, Valoran's also going to pick it up. Uh, you would imagine, and Valoran would know from her studies, that it would be a temple to uh, Coralin Lotharin, which is uh, the mm -hmm. main... Um, He's the main dude. Main dude of the Elven realm. He's the and main you, dude. Uh, upon kind of thinking about it, you realize that her greeting originally was the um, you know, correct greeting of an elf of high power, saying, may your grace be granted. Um... Yeah, he's alright. He's an alright guy. Yeah, he's a, he's okay. It's uh, you know, uh, and she kind of looks to you and say, "Again, I I just appreciate being a part of this journey. Though my days are quite long, I would love to see the the light shine again." And you, Chancellor Nororis, we thank you. It is good well, to hear some kind words after our trials and tribulations. And we'll, we'll be back before we leave to talk about getting to the Temple of the Moon. Ah, uh, well, if you think you'll be going that way, then... We uh, might. We, we might not, though. We might go somewhere else entirely. Well, I mean, there's a relic there, so we'll go there. <laughs> yeah, someday, sure. Uh, Barrett's going to say loudly, we will discuss it <laughs> later. Uh I will tell you that it is a long way since per, uh, since it has been forgotten, and if, I'm sure there could be some evil that has long since taken over it, but uh, if you'd ha! like to go that well... We it, laugh at evil. Well, well, of ha! course. Of ha! course ha! you do. Hey, and even in my youth, I may have laughed at the evil itself, but now it is just, uh, you know... It's not so funny anymore. <laughs> it's, it's not so funny no more. Uh... Uh, I, I will see to it that the way, at least that I could reach to, is cleared. So if you do choose to take that path, I would be more than glad to, to oblige. And she kind of puts her hand up, pointing to the door as if her conversation is clearly done. <laughs> GTFO. <laughs> no, so GTFO. If, if you could just get the fuck out now, that'd be really great. Right. <laughs> I've got things to attend to. As, as everyone's leaving, uh, uh, Valorin, like, pats hats like randomly her belts and pockets and she's like oh crap i i dropped the th i'll be right back i'll catch up and she turns around <laughs> um <laughs> uh all right um so is everyone as, leaving then <laughs> yep yeah right. clap you will roll her eyes and keep walking <laughs> her charisma is terrible by the way um yeah as everyone leaves she's like so are you from cinderin Ah, uh, it is long since I heard that tale. Uh, it's real? I think it's time that you know the truth, little one. Yes, yes Sindarin is in fact real. Though its guardian has long since been forgotten. Of this I can at least tell you that the Lady of Dreams and Moonbow herself had, had would choose a champion that would protect over the bloodline. And she would touch that champion with her own powers and wisdom. Perhaps that is why you were chosen. She kind of just stares at you. 
I mean, I'm just, I'm just here. I'm just along for the ride. I'm not like one of the heroes. Uh, right? She's going to lean in and go, if that's what you need to tell yourself. I kind of lean back. Where is Cinderin? It's been more than five or six hundred years at this point. It, I could tell you, it lives on an island. It is the birthplace of us elves. Many a person had journeyed to try to find it, but no one has returned, sadly. She gets really serious, look in her eyes for a moment, and says, I'm going to find it. Ah, and I hope you do. If you do, please, please come tell me. Do you have, like, family there? You want me to, like, say hi? Give them a note? Lots of money? Anything? Ah. Uh, I think by this point I've been long since forgotten. I chose the way of diplomacy. And here I reign. Well... I mean, I guess. Thanks. <laughs> My door is always open to you six. To simply tell the guards. All right, I will take my leave. Did you find your thing that you dropped? <laughs> she, she holds up her. She she immediately pulls out of her pocket a uh, um the little owl statuette. Says I am such a klutz. <laughs> um, okay, Seriously, you know I don't know why you keep me around. Go ahead and make up for a deception check for uh, uh, Valorant. Yep. Yep. Ciao. Ciao. Oh yeah. Ciao. Ciao. Calliope just rolls her eyes at you. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Frederick just kind of chuckles under his breath and kind of keeps walking, uh, and then says, "Frederick's gonna look at her knowingly." <laughs> she is like it's super clearly embarrassed and just like lowers her eyes. <laughs> <laughs> shit. Oh, that's awesome. Um, oh shit, I'm clicking the wrong thing. Delete, delete. Okay, uh, I will say that um, the the uh, chancellor would have told you that the closest place by would have been the blacksmith, which would have been Elmer. right here. Yeah, it would have been would have been Elmer. So if you guys want to go see Elmer. Yeah, I'm going to work say... with uh, Korok on getting some, hiring some tradesmen um, or um, uh, the Fortress of Radiance. <clears throat> Castle Vandegar. All right, so... Let's all go off with Korok. Beric and Korok. The well-lit keep. And I'm actually going to call it a night early, guys, because i got to get up early. <laughs> Well, it keep. Just... Uh, awesome. All right. Well, I mean, we can always call it there. This is a this is a good place to stop. That's okay. I mean, if you guys want to do shopping and all that kind of stuff, that's just. Uh, Beric will go with Korak and we're gonna look, we're gonna spend all your money. money. Oh, speaking of which, what what that. you would have realized because Calliope, I'm sorry, there's no way you would have kept this to yourself. It was <laughs> it was. Uh, let me make sure I got the right number here before I make it too much. Um. <laughs> Yep, I was right. 600 platinum pieces. Sweet. Sweet. Yeah, Calliope will distribute that. Um, Calliope's plan is to go to the dandelion mm -hmm. to set herself up for playing all night and getting room and board for her and her radiant company. That's how she refers to them. She says, I'm Calliope <laughs> Farshatter, and this is my radiant company. <laughs> Calliope and the radiant company sounds like yep. an awesome band name. Yep. Oh. Uh, she'll get room and board set up for them and she will and then she's going to work on like selling stuff from the bag of holding and as she's traveling through the city she's going to be spreading the word alright Dan before, her, right, before you go to bed yeah. you, you, you gotta see so this is this is Tomcat of the uh, what? of uh, uh, what? Mellow Dandelion <laughs> right there that's Tomcat Tom Cat, old Tomcat the bartender old Tomcat <laughs> All right, now you can go to bed, Dave. <laughs> no spell casting in here. <laughs> what say you and the old Tomcat Mellow Dello Come on. Uh, so, awesome. All right, so all right, you would see you guys. correct. All right, I got it. Uh, so Calliope is going to go find out about playing it up. Mm -hmm. I'm going shopping. 
you're going shopping. Is there a certain place you want to go shopping? All of the places. <laughs> All the places. Um, Before you go shopping, cause we have the we have the money we just got, but also uh, there's a bunch of stuff in the bag of holding we can sell. Um, Are I, you going to give it to Valorin? No, but Clive, he will <laughs> sell it. <laughs> okay. And then distribute the money. I wasn't sure where you were going with that. You, you could well. probably... Uh, you. I feel like you would definitely ask the guard as you entered the town that you would probably be able to sell it from... Uh, Many of the places, um, maybe the general store might give you the most exchange, if you will. Mm -hmm. Is it Elviana? Uh, the general store is, yep, uh, Elviana. Yep. Elviana. Elviana. Uh, but along the way, uh, Elmer's is there first. So you guys can stop at Elmer's if you want. Sure. Yep. Well, Cli yeah, Calliope just wants to make sure that her first stop is the Dandelion so she can set up. So Her the performance. The dandelion. I can actually remember where I put the dandelion. Well, how is she going to sell all the stuff? Is she going to give the bag of holding to the Valorin? No. She's going to the dandelion first to establish uh, her so, gig and uh, room and board. And then she's going to sell the stuff and distribute money. Uh, and so then the as everyone's <laughs> shopping, they're going to talk about how Calliope's going to play that night. And everyone should bring their friends. So the dandelion is past Elmer's. Okay. Do you want to stop at Elmer's first? Yes. So Elmer's, just so I can... There you go. Elmer's is there. Dandelion is up there. Um, let me find the castle. I can actually uncover some things on the map to make it easier on you guys. There you go. All right. So as you come up to Elmer's... Um, where's Elmer at? There we go. Uh, so... <clears throat> There you go. So you enter Elmer's shop. It, it, it's dark, but it has a nice glow from the back. And you can see many items lining the walls. And he's wearing a very clean apron. Uh, in fact, bling, bling. Um, very clean apron. And before uh, before coming to see you, he washes his hands in, a, in kind of a slop sink and then approaches you. His face is very stone and expressionless. Uh, he simply nods. And without smiling, he says, Well, hey, welcome to Elmer's. Uh, what we brings you in there? Uh, hey, they call me Elmer. You can call me Elmer. You can call me Elms or Big E. Uh, whatever you like to call me. What's cooking? Hey, hey. Uh, wait, what's going on? What, what oh, can I do for you? wide. Uh, but it's, uh, he is not smiling at all. Okay. Uh, Calliope gives a dramatic bow and flourishes her cape. Calliope Farstrider and her radiant company at your service. Oh, well, welcome to the party. How, how, how what? Uh, well, obviously, we have adventurers, and his eyes get kind of big. He's still not smiling at you, um, but he's he's just looking at you. We are indeed adventurers who have recently vanquished the evil to the north. We have goods to sell and goods to purchase. Are you saying where those damn dwarfs came from? And he kind of leans in. Indeed. And the evil gray dwarves have been killed, and the good enslaved dwarves have been freed. Well, I'm, I'm quite glad to hear, to be honest with you. I mean, it's a, they're, they're hard on their tools. They treat him so poorly, you know, they got the feelings, you know, their tools they do. And he kind of, like, rubs the knife that he has at his side. An insight of 17. Mm -hmm. What the fuck is going on? He seems to really enjoy his weaponry. Sure. Not so much into people? Not so much into people. Got it. They got the feelings, you know. And I don't like the way they've been treating their tools. I mean, look Valorant's at that rubbish over there, and he kind of points to like, the ground. Really wide, and she's just like slowly backing out of <laughs> blacksmith's shop. So, so what, 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 what can Emmer do for you to hear? I'm trying to think what to, I don't know if I have anything in the uh, no most like all the stuff in the bag of holding I have to sell is like chalice and bracelet and I don't know that he's gonna well he might want like the metal Swift Eye are you still awake or do we lose you no I'm back I'm Good. sorry I had to uh, I had to put away some cookies make oh cookies make I a perception make a oh, have that. make a perception check with uh, advantage. I don't perceive some stuff. I have so many little windows open in this right now, but Good. I don't want to close I love it. anything. <laughs> you never know when you're going to I can them. barely see what we're rolling. Okay. 
Is what did what? I roll? I uh, can't see my you, answer. You rolled a 20. Roll again, though. Ah! Because you, you have perception. Okay, yeah. Um, so, Swift Eye, even though you can't necessarily see it, um, there's almost a calling from you. Uh, and your hands slowly start to reach out. And, and on the table, the rest of you see that there is uh, two silver uh, knuckles uh, that one could grip in their hands. Uh, and Swift Eye is slowly going near it. And Elmer goes, Ah, I see you have a wonderful taste there, lass. Um, could you be interested in such a thing? And he kind of offers them to you to inspect. What do they feel like? Are you picking them up? Uh, yeah, I'm going to sense them with my hands. Excellent. So uh, upon gripping them, you fall into a deep trance. The rest of the party uh, kind of sees that you have kind of gone. Um, it, your eyes kind of fl flutter a little, uh, a little. And what you see, and the rest of the party does not, is y your vision blurs immediately um, upon slipping the knuckles into your hands and your image reappears and, and in front of you there is two artisans they're they're standing in a river edge each taking turns suspending a, a, a slender blade in a small creek with a cutting edge facing against the current the first sword cuts everything that passes its way fish leaves just ripping things through the water uh, even the air blows against it and gets shredded in its presence uh, highly impressed, the second artisan lowers his blade into the current and waits patiently. Only leaves were cut. Fish swim right past it in the air, simply hisses and blows past. After a while, the first man begins to scoff at the other, for his sword apparently lacks the same skill that the first one made. Smiling to himself, the second man pulls out his sword, dries it, and sheaths it. After a while, the first man was hackling at the other. Upon walking up, to the river, uh, a man sees the whole ordeal and begins to explain and says, the first of the swords was all by, uh, was by all accounts a fine sword. However, it was bloodthirsty and evil, as it does not discriminate to whom or what it cuts. It may just as well be cutting down a butterfly as severing heads, but the second was far finer of the two and does not needlessly cut which is innocent and undeserving. And the vision fades, and you feel the cold metal in your knuckles, knowing what the weapons truly are. Uh, and I, I think I can share both of these with you. Um, uh, the rest of you kind of notice that uh, Swift Eye has been kind of just standing in the presence. Her eyes been fluttering back and forth. Um, Elmer's really kind of concerned and go. Buddy, you're buying these things. I mean, if if not, I mean, if you're not going to appreciate these weapons for what they all are, I think you should just put them down last. Um, I'm going to put down a, a platinum piece in front of him and say, that's just a deposit. I'm sure we're going to buy it. She just does this sometimes. But consider this platinum a deposit for the eventual purchase of these items. Well, good. I mean, they're not cheap. They're about 600 piece, uh, 600 gold oh. a piece. Oh. I mean, look at the craftsmanship. I don't know anything about, but I'm sure they're <laughs> great. <laughs> These fists were not made for punching. She kind of like shadow boxes a little bit. We could afford it. Oh no, you, you definitely can. You afford definitely it. can afford it. Yeah, you've got yeah. the gold. It would it would yeah, cost no. you twelve hundred gold unless you tried to you know talk him down. Here's the thing. Uh, what is gold anyways sword? though what is gold anyways are they one hand two handed so the way it would work for you is um, one hand like one punch would be with the one one punch would be with the other oh. you, would, you would still be able to do like your kick or any other punches that you get but yeah just do it just do it you can't take it with you I mean, what what say you there? They're quite well crafted. To be honest, I didn't even make them myself. They were made by, well, ar artisans. Quite forgotten. While he's talking, I'm gonna slap down the money. 
<laughs> and slide them into my hands. Uh, yeah. Let me drop those into your, uh, your inventory. Then. Hell yeah. Take my money. Take my money! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you now acquire the Muramasa and the Mass Immune. All right. And so I'm down to 300. And... No, I'm... Uh, yeah, 364 gold pieces. What I have left? Uh, there, I think I made them. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Are they in my actions? Yep, they are. They definitely are. I will. I will tweak them so they actually will do the the correct thing. So they're, they're gonna probably be like a plus six to attack with your the way your attack works. Um, and after he slowly collects all the money, uh, he is going to kind of show off the rest of his wares to the party. Um, say, well, I mean, that's not the only thing that I have. Of course, I'm I'm quite fond of my weaponry. Yeah, I'm sure someone would be interested, but I don't think they're really awake right now. <laughs> well, they can always come back. Clive is going to inspect the crossbow. Mm. Ah, you have a mighty fine eye there, lass. Um, it's it's a... Uh, uh, here we go. Um, it's a f very far superior craftsmanship than and then the ones that you've seen in your past though the weapon seems to be aged mahogany the crossbow itself seems to be very well cared for uh cared for and um seems to almost challenge you to pick it up um and i will there there you go i uncovered it it's a vicious crossbow of many names Trying to think if there's anything else that was actually covered up. <laughs> but I don't think I will be needing any of those things. But if you guys are interested in... Clippy is going to look at the crossbow, but eventually back down. Um, but she might come back tomorrow uh, and buy it. It depends uh, on what else we see. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need you to make a... Do, 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 do. Oh, shit. Touched it. Make a... Um, I don't want to make you do that. Make a constitution save. <laughs> you got a cursed item, son. Oh, oh shit. Uh, so as you look at the crossbow itself, it, it, you have this yearning to just blast off as many bolts as you have in your inventory. <laughs> um, and you're, uh, in the back of your Excuse mind, there's a... There's a singing tone that kind of brings you back to the, the present and the, the bloodlust kind of drains from your eyes. And and although it pains you to do so, you very carefully put the bow down and look at the blacksmith and go, it's a very well-made weapon you have here. Uh, and you kind of lose its grip on it and, and drop it to the counter with a clang. Yeesh, okay. I don't know if I like that. <laughs> you should touch it again. <laughs> no, no. Just touch, I might, touch I, it again. I, I might come back for it tomorrow when I'll get it, maybe. Uh, oh, by the way, uh, Elmer, I'm not sure how late you work tonight, but I, Calliope Farstrider, will be performing tonight at the Dandelion. And sure. if you come, you'll hear the tale of the evil from that castle up north and how we vanquished it. There may or may not have been a dragon involved. Uh, so, Calliope, you didn't notice this, but Swift Eye and Valorant definitely noticed their footsteps walking away from you. And Elmer just happily goes back to tinging on his axes and whatnot that he's building. Uh, oh, yeah, huh? Calliope, okay, whatever, it's fine. Let me know when you want to buy something else. And he just starts clanging away. 
Wait, footsteps going away from us? Uh, yeah, it was him walking away from the conversation. Oh, I see, I see, I see. <laughs> yeah, if you're not going to buy anything, he ain't well, interested. So much for getting a sweet discount tomorrow after he hears me say. <laughs> Is that the first person you've ever met that hasn't been excited about the show? In this no. campaign? <laughs> I mean, in this campaign, yeah. I'm sure it's happened to Clyde. <laughs> oh, shit. How does that feel? I'm excited to see your show. Uh, I, I, do, do, we want, uh, do you want to go to uh, the Mellow Dandelion before we call it a night? Or do you just want to call it a night here? Uh, it doesn't matter to me. We mostly her plan is just, you know, impress the innkeeper and set up a performance and then start spreading the word. Uh, I will. I will allow you to make a, a performance check for old Tom Cat of Mellow, the Mellow Dandelion. Okay, so she would um, she would do unearthly chorus as she was walking in to give her advantage on her checks with him. Mm. Just like sort of like uh, uh, idly like <laughs> strumming, you know, absentmindedly while she talks to him to get advantage on all of her charisma interactions with him. I oh, imagine yeah. that like while you're having a conversation, there's just background singers saying like Calliope, she's awesome. Calliope. Yeah, that's, that's, what my, that's your unearthly chorus. That's, that's actually what my Frederick. Radio company Frederick does. Is doing yeah. That. It's very guttural. Yeah, there's like there's lots of snapping and shuffling in the background. <laughs> Uh, Bam. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm, yeah. Uh, Tomcat is in the middle of pouring a drink to this this guy, and he kind of reaches up a fist. And he kind of looks around questioningly, and he kind of pushes him aside and goes, What is that on Earthly Chorus? <laughs> <laughs> Calliope, she's awesome. And he kind of like hunches his back a little bit, uh, like you've seen cats in an alleyway do, and go, Calliope. And he kind of looks around. Calliope Farstrider. Hang on, hang on. There <laughs> yes! Calliope, uh, at the at, in your at first he didn't notice right away, but then the cloak caught his eye, and he, and he looks over and goes, Well, Calliope. I have heard that name from friends in Torsindio. What brings you to my wonderful... Well... Bar... We're here to do some shopping, some buying, and some selling, but I figured while I was here, we also need a place to stay. I hope we can come to some sort of arrangement. I would gladly play this evening, late into the night, bringing in customers, customers purchasing drinks, your coffers overflowing, and then my friends and I could stay here for the night. Hmm. Hmm. And then she will lean in and whisper just between you and me. When I was in, what's the name of that town? Torciendo? Torciendo? <laughs> that, that would be correct. Uh, she will, um, I don't remember the numbers, but Calliope knows the numbers as far as like, if his like standard nightly thing was like tripled or quadrupled or whatever. Um, the cat's eyes widen immensely and goes, perhaps we could strike a deal. Well, over here, and he just kind of like shuffles around and there's a, a very makeshift office that he's kind of made and he hunches down in his seat and he goes, well, I'll just sign here last. And he kind of dips it in his inkwell and scribbles on the page uh, about a, a percentage. Uh, and of course, my friends and I will eat, drink, and sleep for free tonight. <sighs> Fine. <laughs> I'll put that in the cause. And then he starts scribbling on there. And he goes, mm, the going rate has been, and he kind of looks at you and goes, 2%? Uh, it, what did I get from the last guy? Was it like 5 or 10? Uh, it, it was pushing like 10 to 15. Okay. He's clearly trying to lowball you. Two, two percent. Oof! Clearly, you are not accustomed to having traveling musicians improve your customer satisfaction for the night. You know, 
Ballard pokes her head in. <laughs> oh, is it, are you in a room? He like pulled her kind of like. Oh, never mind. I was about well, to use my. Well, it's like it's, it's, it's over but... here. I mean, you can you can see it. It's just kind of off the bar slightly. It's yeah. like around the corner. And he's a he's a big cat. You know, historically speaking, the going rate uh, for for these kind of deals is at least ten percent. In fact, in the in the history of the city of Sisa, the average the average percent has been at least twelve twelve point three percent. I'd like to roll a history check to try to give Rachel advantage on her negotiations. <laughs> roll it up. Boom. Nice. Damn. You have advantage and a plus two. There, there's a like surge of energy go up the, the cat's back and you can see his hair kind of standing on end and he looks kind of irritated uh but his face doesn't show it oh yeah and i'm not used to people who are shall we say educated <laughs> yeah suck it fine suck what it. is your going rate and he kind of tell you what you. since this is our first Agreement. I'll take 10% plus the room and board. And now, after you see what good I do for your business tonight, I'm sure that in the future, you'll be perfectly willing to increase that number by a bit. But introductory rate, 10%. Whoa! And he ponders it for a moment. He kind of chews on the end of the quill that he's writing with. And he dips it back in the ink. And he scribbles it back on there and goes, I think we've got a deal. And he slides it over and kind of puts out his paw. As in Won't a, regret it. And she will shake. He shakes it. Uh, the, the claws kind of curl around your hand. He kind of shakes it hardly. And then he lets out a good kind of chuckle. And he goes, I think this is a wonderful start of a relationship. Perhaps drinks are on me. And then he goes, <gasps> I said that aloud. Well, it's too late. Drinks are on me. And he kind of chow, you know, cheers to the crowd. <laughs> uh, and you've signed a contract for 10% plus room and board. Nice. Uh, and that should be a good place to stop for the night. Yeah. Valorant looks excited that she helped. Valorant looks excited that she helped. All right. Calliope will sort of like smile, nod, and give her a wink as she walks by. Winkity wink. I told you I'm good with people. <laughs> If you just quote statistics, people usually come around. Um, people I made... really, really like cold hard facts. <laughs> I made the prophecy public, right? Like, you can pull that up you from did. now on? Yeah, okay, yeah I can see it. Just wanted to make sure. Awesome. Well, that is where we will end the uh, the tales of the Radiant Company for tonight. Uh, I will... I, I will go, I shopping for spells. Um, we gotta go fight something. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, Swift Eye, I'm so... <sighs> I'm so excited about those weapons. Um, which, speaking of which, I need to, I need to change them because I feel like they do even more damage than when I made them. Uh, n no. Uh, so I made all of your attacks based on wisdom. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, I think. Let me do a little clicking here. <clears throat> I don't, I don't know if it'll actually change it, but it, it, it might. Um, but yeah, they're, they're, they're pretty baller. I haven't gave him a backstory. Yeah. All right. They, I think they're working. I think they're good. I still think so, they're, they're low though. Why is this so low? So the cold is. Oh, I figured it out. That's why. Which one's, which one's which? Uh, so the cold is Muramasa. The mass immune is radiant. Okay. I mean, like, do they do different things? Or are they, oh, they pretty they, much they, the same? They totally do. Um, okay. I gotta read into this more. Yeah, so the, the Muramasa will give you cold damage. Ooh. The mass immune will give radiant damage. So when you roll these puppies... They're going to do normal damage plus whatever it is that you attacked with. So, radiant or oh, oh, oh. Uh, or cold. So, you, you, have the, you have the potential to kick some ass. Uh, 